Six ways the narcissist uses silent treatments. The use of and imposition of silence amount to two of the most powerful weapons in our abusive arsenal. Silence is easy to deploy and horrendously effective in securing our aims of compliance, control and fuel. Number one. Silence is always meaningful. You may sit quietly because you have no need to say anything. You may remain silent because you are listening to somebody else or you are just enjoying the silence. We do not allow silence to be used in such a passive and redundant fashion. Our silence is used to control. Our silence conveys contempt. It is used to draw concern from you, cause anguish in you, which amounts to fuel. When we fall silent, that pregnant pause is an indicator of the cold fury being unleashed against you. The longer silence is the imposition of our cold fury as we assert control through the assert third assertion of control and you are banished through a sustained silent treatment. When we sit in silence, where there is another appliance, we are not savouring the lack of noise. We are asserting control over you. And where you are dealing with the greater or the ultra, the silence is being used to plan and to plot, to calculate our next move. For all narcissists, our silences are weapons. They are a headquarters, a defence against your threat to our control. We use silence to hurt you, to warn you, to scold you, and to indicate that you have overstepped the mark by challenging our control. Every silence has a meaning. It would be remiss of us to use it any other way. 2. Absence makes the silence longer. The deployment of an absent silent treatment where we remove ourselves from you invariably with no warning or indication is a confirmation to you that this silent treatment will not be short-lived. The need to absent ourselves rather than sitting in silence with you sends a clear signal that we will be gone for some time, meaning more than a few hours. It is designed to cause you to try to come after us, to try to contact us and beg and plead for our return, for you to express your worry, your concern, your apology, your sorrow. This signals to us that you are under control and of course fuels us. When we impose a period of absence by vanishing, we are of course asserting control over you, and we are also demonstrating through this act how easily we remove ourselves from you, because there is no attachment, that we are able to consign you to oblivion in an instant. You just do not exist. In some instances, you may not even be able to contact us, but we obtain thought fuel from the knowledge that this sudden disappearance causes you considerable consternation and worry. This thought fuel, however, is ephemeral in nature and short-lived, and therefore we do require your proximate response, the flurry of text messages and calls. An absent silent treatment is often an indicator 
that we are using this time to seduce somebody else, that we are spending time with them, that we are asserting control over them directly, invariably in a benign way, and we have asserted control over you by our withdrawal from you. The false love, the false attention, the false flattery, which we have removed from you, is now being applied elsewhere. Number three, the silent gesture. Our silences are not just occasioned by us not talking to you or absenting ourselves for a period of time. We also deploy silence through gestures. We may not turn up when we have agreed to a date with you in order to assert control over you and to reinforce how you mean so little to us because we have any number of more pressing engagements to attend to than dine with you in a restaurant. This exhibits our sense of entitlement, our lack of accountability to you and the relationship in whatever form it takes, and our lack of emotional empathy for how this makes you feel. We may leave you alone in bed, our side of the bed now cold and empty, and this is a hammer blow to your confidence and self-esteem as we select the spare room, the sofa, or even the bed of someone else in preference to being with you during the night. The silent telephone call from a withheld number used when we are hoovering you is an amalgam. The hoover is a direct assertion of control, but the failure to speak is a form of withdrawal at the same time, and is the assertion of control and is designed to provoke you, to cause you to ask, who is it, what do you want, I know it's you, to cause your mind to race, is it us calling you this late? It must be, mustn't it? But you cannot be sure. The failure to buy you a gift on your birthday, creating a gap which ought to have been filled, is noticeable and stands out considerably. And through this silent gesture of failing to recognise your birthday, you are hurt and your response draws fuel and allows us to see that we have control over you. Number four, the silent presence. By giving you the cold shoulder, the brush off, the icy glare, when everyone else is met warmly and enthusiastically, we cause you to feel completely alone, even when you are surrounded by others. Again, this active withdrawal is asserting control over you. You try to carry on, as if nothing has happened, but you know that people will be wondering why we are not speaking to you. You will feel a flush of embarrassment as once again you try to speak to us and you receive only a glare, and then we move away from you. You want to challenge us, but as ever, it would be you who is criticised for creating a scene. You want to upbraid us for our childish sulking, but you have now learned that the consequences of doing so are not worth suffering so you remain silent. Control has been asserted. Our narcissism recognises that freezing you out in the company of others is a powerful step. Number five, suffer in silence. You are never to speak of what goes on between you and I to anyone else. Should you ever do so, you are committing an act of heinous betrayal and your punishment for such a transgression will be malicious and fierce. You are not to betray me and speak of what you are subjected to. You are expected to endure it, so that you become, in our eyes, a better person, one who is compliant and obedient. You must understand this. I recognise that you fear the repercussions of speaking out, and this enforces my curfew. I, of course, say nothing of the way that you are treated, and my silence in that regard should be replicated by you. We recognise that you feel compelled to remain loyal because of the golden period, and how, driven by emotional thinking, you feel duty-bound to remain and try to resolve matters, the corruption of your empathic trait of the desire to heal and fix, 
for you to work this difficult period through and fix that which has become somehow broken. Your indefatigable spirit teeters on the brink of misplaced pride at not telling tales, and instead knuckling down, irrespective of what is thrown at you, in order to bring about a resolution to our problems. You cannot succeed, but you do not know that. For now, you must suffer in silence and replicate our own. Number six. I speak, you stay silent. Never interrupt me, never talk over me, never steal my thunder. Silence is used against you, but this time not my silence, but the treatment of a silence from you. When I speak, everybody listens, because what I have to say is brilliant, great, and of tremendous import. You would do well to listen to improve yourself, please me, and avoid angering me. You are my sounding board, Horatio to my Hamlet, a listener, and indeed, your emotional thinking corrupts your trait of being an excellent listener, another of your empathic traits to cause you to believe that you ought to do this, and therefore... Silence is used against you by expecting it of you, so that you only speak when it is required to honour my achievements and lord my greatness. You are to be seen, but only heard when I deem it necessary. The imposition of the silent treatment is one whereby you must remain silent. Who wants to listen to what you have to say anyway? You only get invited to events because of me. They are only friends with you because of me. They are friends of mine. Nobody is interested in you. Nobody. Therefore, you should stay quiet and listen. Remain shrouded in the silence, because if you do not, you may well very well find yourself on the receiving end of further silence from me.